Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to continue talking about the topic of training for attractiveness, or training for prettiness, or training to be sexy. We did a walk and talk video previously where we had talked about kind of core ideas that lay into this idea. Let's talk a little bit more about design strategies to attain this idea. In order to get prettier, for the most part, you need to be pushing close to your edge or close to your capacity. There are a bunch of different ways to do this, and each type or apparatus of training will have a slightly different strategy. Say, powerlifting has one strategy, Olympic lifting has another strategy, kettlebelling has another strategy. Let's talk about the strategy that I use a lot in program design, which is designed to do two things, not just make you attractive, it's actually designed to make you more efficient, but it defaults towards making you more attractive on accident. Time under tension, you will hear me throw around this idea a lot in training. Time under tension means how long you're staying under tension for a specific movement pattern. Bodybuilders will use something very similar to this and they will use a rep range and they will use a speed of movement. So you might do a bicep curl and you might do four seconds down, two seconds at extension, two seconds up, that would be eight total seconds. And then they would do say eight reps and that would be eight times eight would be 64. They'd get about a minute of time under tension on their bicep curl and then they would have a break and then they would do it again. They would stack up maybe say three exercises and they would do four sets of each one and they would do six to eight reps or whatever their rep range for that day is and that would accidentally create a lot of time under tension. People don't know that's what they're doing. They see the rep range and they see the number of sets and they kind of leave this part out. But this is really what's happening when people are designing programs that way. That's a pretty classic gym uh, attractiveness design, three exercises for a muscle group, four sets per exercise and then X number of reps depending on your goal. You'll notice I use this idea a lot, time under tension. I have two programs, three programs currently out that use this idea because this also allows us to have completely time controlled training. Our two handed mill squat program from Strong and Fit has five exercises, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. That's a minute times five exercises, five minutes. And then there are four rounds, so it's 20 total minutes. Half of it is work and half of it is rest, but you get time under tension for each movement. You have four rounds, so you would do each movement four times, times 30 seconds, which give you two minutes of time under tension. That's an intro to club program, so there's not more time under tension because most people are gonna lose the ability to control levers about after that point. And the idea is that we're trying to get people to not approach failure because that would mean their technique would fail when you're using a heavy club or a lever, then you could lose control of it and hurt yourself. So there is a very specific mathematical idea in that program. We use a very similar idea in our intermediate weight, intermediate kettlebell program. It has six exercises and four rounds. It's 24 total minutes, but there is time under tension in there as well. Instead of doing it like you would in a gym and isolating a muscle and putting it under tension for that amount of time, we're using a movement pattern and we're putting that movement pattern under time. That gives us an adaptation. And then how we pick our movement patterns and stack them in order gives us an overall athletic development strategy. The side effect of time under tension is that you can do a little bit more each time. That means you're pushing closer to your edge each time, but your technique should also be getting better each time. It's a really nerdy idea, but it's a strategy that works out really well. Give people a lot of opportunity to practice a movement pattern so that they can get better at it, so that they don't get hurt, so that they can do more in the same amount of time, so they can accidentally get prettier. We use the same idea in our slam ball program. The slam ball program is more likely to make people more attractive because the weights are generally heavier and the movements are simpler. The more complex a movement is, usually the lighter the weight is, usually the more athleticism it develops. If we have simpler movement patterns and we can go up in weight at our fundamentals, then we start to build like the fundamentals of a stone lifter structure from say, you know, Michelangelo's stone art from the Renaissance period. That's kind of what the slam ball program is shooting for. Repeat all those base movement patterns over and over and over again. Your time under tension will force you to have muscle response, muscle growth, 
muscle activation no matter what, and you will generally get more attractive from doing the program. But I am always trying to also design our program to be useful. I am too old to any longer do useless things like I used to do. Back when I was in college, we all did the bodybuilding stuff because that's what everybody told us to do. The problem with it was it took forever. It wasn't time controlled enough. So workouts were taking an hour, an hour and a half, and you were always in pain because you were isolating muscles instead of integrating muscles. You need to integrate muscles if you want to be a healthy person. It is not your quads that need to be strong or your hamstrings that need to be strong. It is the movement pattern of a deadlift. It is the movement pattern of a hug squat because everything in the real world is based on movement patterns. You're always running that idea in training, somewhere between isolation and somewhere between integration. Think Pilates, isolationism of certain movements, uh, ballet, total integration. So you can take Pilates and ballet and slam them together and you get a super monster athlete. You could take a farm boy and teach them barbelling. If they had farm boy lifting techniques already and then you added barbelling on top of it, they'd get much, much stronger from the integration of those two ideas. Everything in training exists on that continuum. Body weight training tends to be an extraordinarily good way to get more attractive for the simple reason that it's harder to get hurt during failure doing a push-up. You can get down on the ground and you can do push-ups until failure because when you fail, you fall on the ground. It is different than say doing kettlebell jerks where you have two giant weights that you're swinging around and if you were to fail in the clean, then you would drop the weights and they would fly away from you. Or if you were going into your overhead press and you failed and you dropped it, something could go wrong. So body weight tends to be really safe and easy to do. If your legs fail when you're doing lunges, how far do you really fall? There's no weight to pull on your body. There's nothing to really torque you up. And body weight is really easy to progress at that idea of time under tension. We're gonna talk a lot more about that moving into the next several months. It is now the end of winter 2022. And so we're gonna talk a lot about body weight stuff moving towards the summer months because it's fun. We could use time under tension to build our bikini body if that's what we so desire, but we're gonna talk about it in a way where we do it with only useful movement patterns because I refuse to talk about it any other way. So if people are interested, we can talk about kind of training for attractiveness with different implements or different pieces of equipment and how it works. But think the core idea is pushing you towards the edge of what your muscle or movement pattern can accomplish. The reason a commercial gym is full of machines, chest press machines, incline chest press machines, and there's a whole stack and row of them, is that people can go in there with little to no movement ability, get on there and crank away and feel like they got a good workout because they pushed a muscle group to failure. That is an excellent strategy if you combine it with real athletic training at some point. At some point though, you have to learn to squat properly, you have to learn to get up off the ground properly, you have to learn to pick things up off the ground and put them on your shoulder, you have to learn to jump over things. There's a whole list of primary movement patterns that you have to learn to do. And if you would like learning each one of those different types of movement to help make you more attractive, then you could use a time under tension strategy for that.